Are you journeying through grief and needing a little extra support, inspiration, healing, and guidance? Join me in turning your losses into gains. Hi, my friend. I'm Tara Accardo, creator of the Losses Become Gains online community, blog, and now podcast. I'm an only child who lost both parents to cancer within six months of each other, followed by my sweet fur baby soon after. After all of this, I knew I was meant to do more with what I had been through. And now that means supporting and empowering grievers just like you. I'm a wife, friend, grieving daughter, writer, course creator, loss advocate turned grief coach, and I'm here to support you and move you through your grief. I want for you to feel like I'm your friend in the grief space and know that whatever you're going through, there's someone out there who just gets it. Few topics are off limits here because grief and loss don't hold back either. We'll get into the nitty gritty of what all of this means for you, some coping tools, lifestyle topics, and impactful mindset shifts to take you from just surviving to thriving after loss. So grab a cup of your favorite beverage, get comfortable, and show up with an open heart and mind. I'm so glad you're here. Have you heard about my brand new Losses Become Gains daily journal? I am so proud to announce you can now get your hands on it exclusively on Amazon. But trust me, you don't have to be someone who's grieving or someone who has gone through a loss to use and enjoy this journal. For over a year, I knew I wanted to create a beautiful daily practice in the form of a journal that wouldn't take you a super long time to complete but will add so much value and perspective to your day, no matter what season of life that you're in. The prompts are specifically designed for people going through loss by someone who has also gone through loss, but it's just general enough for anyone to use and asks the important questions that, at least for grievers, I know for a fact that they need to have in front of them each and every day. It's a daily prompt with a separate page for writing more thoughts if more comes up for you, There are six months worth of prompts in this journal, so you can really see your growth and progress right before your eyes. It helps you get to the root of how you're actually doing and what you need to focus on in your healing journey or daily life overall. And it comes in three ocean-inspired colors. Like the ocean, I want this journal to empower you to let it flow, allow yourself to really dig deep and go beyond the surface of your grief or whatever hardships are coming your way and really feel the healing, growth, and evolution that I know you are so capable of. And all in just a matter of minutes per day, that will become a welcome part of your routine, I have no doubt. Type in Losses Become Gains on Amazon, and be sure to scroll down to find all three colors, or click the link in the show notes for details. Pick up your copy of the journal today, or as a gift for someone who could use it. Welcome to the Losses Become Gains podcast. I'm your host, Tara Accardo, and I am so proud and really just very humbled to introduce you to today's guest. Today, we're chatting with Brian Jung, who is the founder of This Is Why, which is a creative platform and community for those who have lost a parent as a child or teenager, which I think is so needed and valuable and is really giving a much needed voice to grief. Brian's dad was involved in a truly horrific incident when Brian was just nine years old, and I don't want to steal his thunder here, so I won't tell you the circumstances just yet. I want you to hear it from him in this episode, but what I will say is from that incident, his dad was unable to communicate and was in immense pain for about a year and a half. You guys, I had chills as Brian was telling the story of how all of this unfolded. I cannot tell you how much I appreciated his vulnerability in this conversation. And I have no doubt you will as well. I mean, your mouth is going to be on the ground, seriously. (laughs) And despite having different stories of how we lost our loved ones, the mindset that we share around finding gains from your losses and making, you know, purpose from the pain is really uncanny. And it's one of the things we connected on when we met on Instagram and what he has created with this is why is a massive piece of this and is one of the many reasons I wanted to have him on this podcast. 
But I also really enjoyed hearing his perspective from someone who has lost a parent as a child, as there are many of us in this community who have lost our parents or parents when we were perhaps a bit older. So hearing about that experience and also how absolutely phenomenal his mom was throughout this whole journey was something that is going to leave you very inspired and very empowered today, I have no doubt. I really just can't say enough amazing things about this chat of ours and how Brian has done such a fantastic job of integrating his grief and the death of his dad into his life to add value to it instead of allowing it to get the best of him. And also I should mention the guidance that he gives at the end of this episode is something you will not want to miss. So with that, enough of my talking, let's get into it. Welcome, Brian, to the Losses Become Gains podcast. I really appreciate your time today, and I've been looking forward to this conversation. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thanks for having me, and finally, great to meet you. Yeah, absolutely. So I always like to just start this off with you telling us about just who you are. So just outside of your loss, any fun facts you want to share, all that good stuff. Yeah, so I uh, was born and raised in Seattle, uh, but these days I've been living in Denver, Colorado. I've been here for about a year and a half and been loving the extra sunshine out here, uh, but still get the outdoor activities. So it's been great. Um, sports are a big part of my life. Still try to play some recreational things. Golf is, you know, one of the one of the top things for me. So, um, you know, it's always something to uh, to kind of kill some time and spend some time with friends on the weekends and uh, and also just music, just not only listening, but also just performing and and that sort of thing. My my mother is a piano teacher, so got the genes from her for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, got that love for uh, for music right away. So, um, yeah, things have been great and uh, just enjoying my time. That's awesome. What instruments do you play? Do, so do you play piano or do you play anything else? Outside. Yeah. So I got into piano, you know, uh, you know, as, as I should, um, right from the get go. Um, but funny enough, I didn't actually take lessons from my own mom because she thought we would bicker too much and I wouldn't be as receptive to her teaching. So, um, sent me, she sent me to one of her good friends who's also a piano teacher, but obviously helped me with practice and all of that, but got into piano, um, thought it was a little too slow for me. So moved into drums around middle school, um, learned guitar in high school and, uh, you know, just love to kind of play piano just off to the side. It's, it's so soothing and cathartic for me just to kind of, you know, mess around. So, um, yeah, just try to keep those in my arsenal as best I can. That's awesome. Yeah. One of the reasons I wanted to ask about that was because I just think, especially with grief, like music and just like music therapy and stuff is so just comforting. It really can just help ground you and sort of, bring you down and it's just fun but my my husband plays guitar too and he i my hands just don't work that way but with the piano <laughs> like there might be some hope so yeah yeah <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> well speaking of grief and your journey of loss definitely one of the reasons i wanted to have you on here because um just from what i know of you so far um your story is of course you know it has our losses and everything what I, which I want you to get to but what you have created with it and the community that you want to build and are building um is really beautiful and I love the concept behind it and it is very reminiscent of losses become gains to me so um I really resonated with that so just tell us about your journey of loss and what your grief journey has been like for you um cuz it's definitely one of the other reasons I really wanted to talk to you is because it's quite different than mine in terms of like when we've lost these prominent people in our lives, you were a bit younger. I don't want to steal your thunder, um, but you were younger losing yours than I was with mine. So I just, I love getting that kind of different perspective too. So really just what has this been like for you? You know, whatever you're comfortable sharing. Absolutely. Yeah. So my uh, grief story essentially started when I was nine years old back in November, 2004. Um, just to provide a little bit of context, my father was a lawyer in the Korean American community um, around the Seattle area. Um, and he was working just on a typical court case, you know, nothing unique, nothing different. Um, and it was going against a lawyer um, kind of in the, in the area as the opposing lawyer. So they were in that court case together. Um, based on some of the court proceedings that I found out a little later on, it sounded like the opposing lawyer thought my father was a little bit ahead in the case. Um, and whatever this meant, he wanted to put my father in the hospital for uh, you know, for a time being just to be able to catch up on time. Um, and whatever that meant, whatever that took, you know, who knows? Um, 
And so November 3rd, 2004, you know, a day I'll never, ever forget and completely change my life, my family's life. Um, my father and the opposing lawyer were supposed to show up to uh, to court together that day. It was just one of their court proceedings um, on that specific day. Um, the opposing lawyer actually came to my father's law office. Um, and as my father was walking out to his car, uh, fired off a silenced pistol uh, three times and struck my father in the head um, once. And that left him in a coma instantly um, and was in a bedridden coma for a little over a year. Um, and and so my father passed away on February 11, 2006. Um, so, you know, definitely a chaotic, just crazy situation, how things can turn so quickly. Um, you know, I just remember November 2nd, just watching some of the election news and with my dad, and he was teaching me all these things about, you know, what's going on for elections in 2024, or sorry, 2004. Um, and, you know, he drove me to to school the next morning. And then, you know, throughout that day, I was just hearing more of the news, you know, getting the updates from mom and um, just a, yeah, just a un, unreal situation. Uh, just, you know, something I'll never, ever forget, no matter how distant I get from, you know, that specific day. But, um, you know, just for my dad to battle for a year and a half, you know, it was just so hard to see him in that state. You know, he wasn't able to communicate, um, you know, wasn't able to move, talk, any of that. And so, just the repeated, you know, ICU visits, rehab visits with my uh, my mom and my one older brother who's three years older, um, you know, it just took such a heavy toll on our family. Um, but you know, I always say that my my mom was the rock, and she is the reason why my brother and I are are where we're at today. You know, I as I get older, I start to realize how much she really did, um, and she kept it. You know she kept a strong face because she not only had to be strong for us, but we knew that she was going through her own process with her husband. Um, and so I, I honestly, it, it's so remarkable kind of what she did raising two young boys and, um, and that sort of thing. So I'm always just so grateful for her, um, you know, getting us through that dark period, but, um, you know, over because I was nine years old and my father passed away, um, you know, a couple of days before I turned 11, um, you know, that was just those early years of, you know, navigating childhood loss at, at that age. Um, and I think just being a kid, you know, I was trying to process just getting through school and going through elementary and, you know, middle school, high school onwards, but really just how to process everything, um, you know, was, was pretty, pretty difficult, um, ended up developing a pretty significant anxiety disorder. Um, it would be kind of, you know, mini panic attacks if I was in a new situation. So if there was somewhere I've never been before, um, or just, uh, you know, going to a new sports tryout or something, I would just get extremely nervous. Um, and that took a lot, you know, you know, a lot of years, a lot of just kind of growing, speaking with, um, you know, different grief counselors, professionals, just to kind of get some help there. Um, and so that was definitely one of the darker periods, but, you know, it really kind of made me appreciate, you know, just family in general, what our love and our bond can do. And that, you know, each one of us, myself, my brother, my mother, we're all going to have this different process of navigating and processing this. Um, but we're going to do it together. And ultimately that's what happened. And that's how we got out of there um, over that, you know, that period where things started to kind of normalize. And, um, you know, we just started to kind of get back to our normal routine, which, um, you know, which, which is very important to me. So, um, you know, as I got older, I started reflecting more and more about that time. And I really, you know, from, from day one, uh, just really wanted to use my experience to help anyone else out who's had something similar. Um, and that's what really kind of got me into how can I get more involved, especially with kind of grief support and, you know, child and teen loss. Um, so I came across a organization called Aluna, um, that is based here in the United States, and uh, they host something called Camp Aaron, which is kind of a nationwide, uh, regional, you know, every state has some sort of Camp Aaron, uh, but it's really a camp for uh, for young children, teenagers who have experienced a significant loss. And it was it was a blessing to find that, come across that and, and, and see that there were volunteer opportunities. So um, 2019, I got involved um, and really wanted to, you know, tangibly, you know, make a difference instead of just kind of envisioning in my head and and just having the hope to do that. So um, it was just so, so special to be a part of that volunteer experience to see these young kids go through the exact same thing, um, if not the exact same thing, something similar, 
um, and just really kind of share that bond with other campers, but also just really kind of find some joy, even if it's for a weekend, yeah. um, which I think was so important because I knew how much, you know, they were holding in, you know, within themselves. And once we had these different games, these crafts, these activities, but also some of these more, um, you know, internal special ritual events where they're kind of remembering, um, you know, their lost loved one, um, you know, just kind of the, the mixture of the agenda was, was perfect for these, for these kids and teens, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, that was very special. And that ultimately got into, um, you know, how can I help even more? You know, I got bit with the bug of, you know, this is, this is incredible and I just want to do as much as I can. Um, and so that kind of led into this is why, which is a grief support platform and community, um, that I founded on father's day, 2021, uh, fittingly. Um, and it's really just, uh, a, a platform for, you know, anyone who has lost a parent as a child or teen, um, essentially in a written format. And I just want to be able to provide that safe space. Um, you know, for anyone, even with the option of anonymity, just to kind of share and release any emotions, thoughts that they have that have kind of been internalized and built in and just kind of have that cathartic release and be able to provide that opportunity. Um, that was something I really wanted to do. And, you know, everyone has a different level of comfort, different level of vulnerability. And so I never force or, you know, pressure anyone into it. I just want to provide, you know, that option to, to, you know, write it, write a letter to your, your younger self or write a letter to your lost loved one or however you want to do it. There's really no prompt, but it's really just kind of that expressive opportunity that I wanted to provide. So, um, you know, it's been a little bit over two years of, of, uh, you know, continuing to build that platform and, and community. And it's just been so special that not only just hear different stories, um, and everyone's unique experiences, but also hear how they've, they've learned, they've learned from it and they grew from it and they're just continuing to build on that, um, you know, from, from this day forward. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, kind of a quick summary and, uh, and a wrap up of where we're at today. My God, where do I start <laughs> with bombarding you with questions? No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, first of all, before we back up into just some of the, just the, the grief that you went through, because I definitely want to talk a little bit about that. But if anybody does want to, you know, submit something to you just to, to like you kind of said, like have this release, like how can they do that? And how does that show up in your community? Is that something you post about? Just give some detail on that. Yeah. Um, so there is a story submission um, link and I'm happy to provide all the links if you uh, yeah, didn't so want to provide that to your community as well. So, mm-hmm. um, and I also have a link tree link, which essentially just has the links to all applicable, you know, social media platforms, um, website and everything. So um, yeah, once uh, a story is submitted, you know, we, um, you know, I definitely want to ask for any special, you know, remembrance picture, but if there isn't one that, because those are very special and very, um, you know, something treasured. So um, I also don't want to force that. So I can always just use a generic, you know, photo that way, but it's really just kind of submitting a story, um, sharing it with the community. And also in that, you know, other readers and contributors can kind of, can kind of, you know, gain some courage and hope from those. So, um, it's just kind of building on these unique, um, experiences and stories and just kind of having a collection of all these and really showing, you know, how grief can, um, you know, it can be definitely a lifelong tough journey, but there is a lot of hope at the end of the tunnel. We just need to build on each other together. Yeah. There's so much uniting. I think that can come from things like that. And I love that it's, it's kind of niche. I feel like we need some of these sometimes. So yours is focused on something kind of specific, um, and giving a voice to that one. I also came across was this woman based in Canada who it was more specifically around like girls or women who have lost their moms. And I just remember feeling so, it was so cathartic and such a beautiful way to honor my mom. Um, but also just reading other stories from other people. It, I mean, these communities and what you're doing is so necessary because grief is nothing, if not a very lonely process. I say this all the time. You can have the, the quote, right people around you and you can have your loved ones or whatever. But if you are just in a dark place and really missing the person that you need, or it's just kind of not the right support, or you just don't feel seen and heard. It it makes you feel that much more lonely. It's like, it's a, a moot point. You're just like, I don't, you know, it just, it just makes the grieving journey that much more difficult. So, um, I just think what you're building is, is so amazing and so needed and really just giving 
you know, a, again, a, a voice to our grief and giving people permission to talk about it and feel comfortable. And I love that you you are doing this in a way where you're just like, hey, you could be totally anonymous. You don't have to let anyone know you're doing this or anything, or you can like shout it from the rooftops and you're just loud and proud. Like, here's the person or people that I've lost and here's what I miss about them. And, you know, and each end of the spectrum is beautiful and okay. Cause it's, it's our journey. Right. And it's all unique to all of us. So, um, I think it's just such, such a healthy outlet that that is so needed. So, um, that's, that's amazing. What I also just want to quickly do. So just backing up to kind of the sort of the beginning of your, your story, because one of the reasons I, I really wanted to, again, also have you on, and I don't think I've really spoken to anybody in depth about this yet is, um, losing, especially a parent as a child, like a very young child and how that could affect you developmentally, or just, you know, like a lot of people I know of, um, you know, we've lost our parents like in our twenties maybe or something, which is, you know, not to compare, but it's just, it's just very different. Um, but before I get even get into that, I have to ask because my dad was a lawyer as well. What kind of law did your dad practice? I'm curious. He, um, to be honest, I don't know the specific type of law that he was working on, but I knew that a lot of it was local and dealing with kind of businesses. So maybe commercial, gotcha. uh, commercial law there, but, um, yeah. What about your father? He was a criminal defense attorney, wow. but f- first of all, I just wanted, let's really back up and just say, first of all, how profoundly sorry I am for not only the loss of your dad, how it happened. I cannot. My, my go-to is always like, I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't begin to imagine. And yes, some of us can, who have lost a parent, we can imagine. But again, our circumstances are all so different. Um, you know, having lost my parents to cancer, very different than a very traumatic way of losing your father as you did. And so, and not only just the actions of that individual, but everything after that. And, and we'll get to that in a moment. But I bring up the lawyer part too, because there were a few times where and my parents would always like tiptoe around this. So I don't know if they were like death threats that my dad got, but he definitely got some, again, uh, threats might be a strong word, but like in that, I'm going to say line of business, because I don't have a more eloquent way of saying that right now. It is, sure. it is not the safest environment. It's very scary. It always like bothered me so much. These people that he had to stand next to and defend that did horrific things. And he was a defense attorney, right? But there was like no getting these people off. Um, and so that always just, it, it's, it's uneasy, you know? So I just wanted to, I don't know, just acknowledge that and just acknowledge that sort of, you know, commonality that we had, but I, I certainly did not know the detail of, of your story. So that I just, I just know I had chills like the entire time you were talking and especially being the age that you were at. So just getting into that for a moment. I mean, I I definitely remember like, you know, as a kid, there might be certain moments or certain things that are like, you can remember super vividly, or you're like, you know, kind of that typical, like, I remember it like it was last week kind of a thing. Did you remember days around that? Like how fuzzy is that now? Kind of that whole year and a half that he was still alive. Like do a lot of those days kind of um, are they still very vivid for you or how does that work? Cause I'm, I'm also realizing just in, as in my journey of grief, like, you know, there's certain moments or certain days. And, you know, again, I was like in my late twenties at this point, but then like so much of it, I'm kind of like, Ooh, some of it's like a little gray now, or it, um, kind of fused together in a way, almost to the point where I like start second guessing, like, Oh, is that my memory? Or is that something I'm kind of like making up now? Like grief is grief is crazy. So just, I want to say too, if anybody listening here is like feeling like they're going through this or like losing their minds a little bit over if they're remembering something correctly, um, that's very normal. And, and I think a lot of us go through that, but just with you being so young, I'm just curious, like, I don't know, you've touched on that a little bit, but anything else you want to yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, I think there is kind of that, you know, you know, regardless of how, you know, how recent that event was or how far away it was, you know, I think there's just something so unique happening in the brain where it's just kind mm-hmm. of, do you really remember it? Was that a reality? Um, and, you know, I, in my mind, I'm, I'm 
pretty certain of all the specific events on November 3rd, 2004, just because how unique of a day it was. Um, And, you know, of course, remember a few of the, you know, hospital visits, the rehab clinic visits. um, But to be honest, I, a lot of it was just kind of a blur and getting through one day at a time. Yeah. Um, and I think that was just kind of a, a multitude of, of different things happening at the same time. I think just, you know, myself being nine, 10 years old, um, and just having this kind of young brain trying to process all of this, you know, losing someone in our immediate family, you know, how, how does a kid do that? Um, and also just all the different kind of outside noise coming into our family. Um, you know, my, my mom did such a great job just really trying to temper down and any of the public kind of exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was always careful about kind of protecting our family because we, uh, we did have, you know, some local reporters, uh, you know, try to just stop by the house and, um, you know, ask questions. And so my mom did such a great job just to kind of let my brother and I know, you know, just keep us updated with, you know, what's going on, just kept us in the loop as best she could, but also kind of kept out all of the, you know, the court details, um, everything there. So she, you know, as I always say, she just did such an incredible job, just so many different things that she did. Um, but yeah, you're exactly right. It's, it was just essentially a blur for, for quite a bit of time. Um, you know, just because we had to now readjust as a family in terms of, okay, this is our life as a team of three instead of a team of four, you know, how are we going to do this, um, moving forward? And so, um, especially just kind of that anxiety disorder for myself, just starting to develop, um, trying to get help that way. And then going into the middle school years, which are you know hard enough as it is. Um, and so all that was really kind of a blur and, you know, between, you know, when everything happened and then also some of the, the recent years after that. Um, but as I reflect, you know, I just try to remember to be honest more and more and as much as possible, because that is ingrained in my story and my life and how I got here. And I never want to lose that. And that's, um, you know, something that you've been so incredible in doing with your work and your space is that really kind of learning from your losses and, and, you know, how you can, you know, essentially benefit from just such tragic, you know, crazy experiences. So, um, yeah, definitely was, uh, was, was difficult, you know, whatever the, the specific reasoning, or if it was just a combination of different reasons, but, um, you know, we just got through it and just, uh, you know, it was something that I'm going to be forever grateful for because we just stayed on the right path together as a family and just continue to be so close today. And it's, uh, you know, it's something so special to me. That's awesome. Oh my God. I, you know, I feel like a loss like that can like kind of make or break you as a family, as a family unit individually and all of that. Um, your mom sounds unreal. I mean, I, I cannot begin to like comprehend what she must've been going through. Not only just that day, all, all the year and a half, after that trying to balance two boys husband in a hospital like and and that's an extended period of time i mean i can again only a fraction of uh, can uh, like empathize with that just seeing you know what my parents went through and just in and of itself how hard that was just trying to like work (laughs) and maintain a job and do a decent job as as we're going through that But then you on top of it, you know, you're going through school and then just to have this on top of it, I, I, and then, yeah, your, your mom, I mean, she just sounds like an absolute hero. I mean, like, have you, have you talked to her now that you're like older, have you talked to her about, I'm going to say how she kept it together. That's probably like a huge blanket statement (laughs) because there's probably so much complexity to that. But like, did did she ever kind of talk about that? Like it was just a day at a time kind of thing or like how she kind of like kept her head above water? Yeah, we haven't really gone too in depth yet, but, um, you know, it's it's something that is just kind of inherent with how, you know, we moved through those past, you know, those past years. But, um, you know, I think she just had such a strong support group around her, um, which I think is pivotal for anyone and everyone. Um, you know, we had such great neighbors that were willing to help all the time. We had, you know, family friends that were willing to help all the time. And, um, and, you know, she was, you know, as as you touched on just dealing with so many different things. Um, and so when we would have some of our friends come over and just kind of console her and, you know, I remember that she, you know, she would close some doors in the bedroom and I could hear her crying and it, it just, it killed me, you know, it really just hurt, um, knowing how much, you know, she was going through at that time. And, 
um, was just such a, such an intense kind of couple of years, um, really just trying to navigate, you know, like I said before, how are we going to, you know, push forward through this? Yeah. Um, and she, you know, also had to deal with the court proceedings because, uh, the opposing lawyer, uh, forgot to mention did get caught a few minutes after, cause he tried to actually run away um, about that. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, <laughs> did get caught. And, um, yeah, so they were going through, so my mother and our family was now going through another court proceeding with, right. with this opposing lawyer and trying to figure that whole deal out. So, um, you know, just her keeping that under wraps, not really giving my brother and I too much detail. Um, you know, it really you know, it really helped our, you know, childhood growth, um, I would say, because I think something even more traumatic than what happened in terms of learning some of the details and all of that would have just been incredibly, you know, difficult to come out of. Right. Um, so I think her ultimate goal for us was really just to kind of have us have as normal of a childhood as possible. And yeah. so she kept us in sports, kept us, you know, in music if we wanted to do music, yeah. but um, just so grateful that she never really pushed us to do anything, but really just kind of um, almost nudged us to make sure that we're not just going to, you know, veer off the wrong path or anything yeah. like that, but just stay, you know, just, just be a kid as best as we can. And we'll, and we'll figure it out along the way. Yeah. Just like some sense of normalcy, whatever normalcy really even meant <laughs> at that point, Exactly. you know, exactly. there's kind of never a normal again, but you do, you do. I, I actually kind of hate this whole like new normal thing after COVID. I'm just like, it's just nails on a chalkboard now anytime I hear that. <laughs> but I hate to say it, but like a new normal, that is, that's pretty much what it is. It's not, there is no going back. There is no feeling the same as before. And I think a lot of people resist that. And understandably so that is that, you know, you just want things to go back to the way they were. And for such a senseless, I'm going to say crime, because that's really what it was like. I mean, I don't know. I mean, all, all three of you, I'm sure were just had your own different ways of processing it and everything. But yeah, especially as the parent, as the partner, as as she was, I mean, I know none of us are perfect, but I truly just from what you're telling me, like, it sounds like she handled it as gracefully and as as perfectly as she could. And I think also I'll just say, and then I'll I'll go to the next question is just like, it sounds like she did a really amazing job of not keeping you guys in the dark, which I actually think is so important. And I, I would imagine that a lot of parents might want to do that because they're, they're just so afraid of, you know, of traumatizing their kids more, or, you know, it's, it's not appropriate or whatever, but there's a reason that like a lot of, um, I'm just going to say, I'm not making this up, but I, guess, I think it's like therapists and counselors or whatever. They encourage you to use the word. They died. They are dead. Then they didn't pass away. They didn't, and I catch myself using that still, but you know, just to be, to be blunt about it in some ways um, and to just not tiptoe around those things. But of course, understanding you're nine <laughs> at the time and your brother, it sounds like was not much older or younger and, you know, still having to just filter in what you guys, you know, hear and see not, and, and knowing that, okay, the details will come with age or when it's, when it's appropriate. Um, so it just sounds like she did just a phenomenal job of a lot of things, but, um, you know, with kids, I'm sure that's just an added complexity to an already devastating situation. So a lot, lot to be learned from you, but a lot to be learned from your mom too. So <laughs> just giving her some kudos in this episode, because it sounds like she, she deserves it. <laughs> she does. <laughs> yes. So what is something, and you kind of answered a little bit about this, but just to ask you more, more directly, what is something about your loss or just in any, just specifically about your dad's death or maybe the, the day that everything happened or the year and a half after what is something that you found to be the most difficult? Or I also like asking this question is sort of like something you didn't feel warned enough about in terms of like how hard it would be. And I know that's kind of maybe a tough question to answer in like your nine or 10 year old self. <laughs> but if there is anything, you know, again, back then, or that you've realized now that you're just like, oh, nobody, nobody told me how hard this is, was going to be, you know, is there anything that comes to mind for you? Yeah, a couple things. I think one, um, you know, just experiencing loss, you know, that just, you know, you know as, as simple as simple <laughs> as that, you know, and you know, my, my dad and I were so close. That's what made it especially tough. Um, but also kind of a, a second point related to that is, 
you know, I, it's something that I think about more and more is my, my dad's death wasn't immediate. It was kind of this prolonged year and a half. And so I kind of wonder, you know, how it obviously wouldn't, would hope dad was still here today, but you know, if something happened within a day, how, you know, how would my circumstances change? How would our family's, you know, entire, uh, you know, kind of ecosystem change, um, together. And, um, I think what was just so difficult was that it was kind of stretched out for so long and just seeing my dad in that way. Um, and just, you know, repeatedly going back to the hospital, the, the rehab center, just seeing him over and over again. And, um, you know, we, we, we loved that he was still with us. He was still fighting. We knew that, um, but just seeing him just struggle and, uh, was, was so incredibly tough just to, you know, just to see as, as a kid and just how close we were, like I mentioned, but, um, yeah, those were just kind of some things, uh, that now looking back, you know, it's not necessarily something you should be warned about, but it is something where we kind of see every day where it's like, you know, we, you know, some, some bad things happen to some, some good and decent people. And it's incredibly unfortunate, but that's why I also think it's so important, you know, the work that you're doing and just having this support community and just having those resources available, um, to really just try to help out anyone who, um, you know, has recently experienced something like that, experienced it long ago, um, or unfortunately might happen, you know, at some point in the future. So it's all just kind of gearing up for, um, for whatever happens in this, in this crazy life we all have, and just trying to see, you know, how can we just, just push through and persevere regard, regardless of what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's something you just mentioned to kind of alluded to, like, you know, circumstances can, can change in a day. Right. So like in my instance, both of my parents' diseases and cancers were, were more gradual. Like it wasn't, um, it wasn't like one, you know, one major event and then they either died or, you know, then had to continue through a very <laughs> intense, rigorous rehab process, or essentially, you know, just not, not being with us in the way that we're used to. Right. And as if that is not shocking enough, as an adult, as a child, I cannot begin to fathom <laughs> what that was probably doing to your young mind. That it's just you're trying to make sense of life in general. But then, you know, you you did go through this very traumatic event where, you know, he might not have died right on that day. But then from that moment on, like as you knew him, no longer existed anymore. And so, and then you know, to move into this new phase, which yes, I guess we kind of get, get used to, I'm going to say, but then you don't, I mean, you, you never really, it's every single time you could see them still laying in the bed as they were when you saw them yesterday, but it doesn't, you're just like, oh my God, is this really my life? Like, how did this, you know, not to make it all about ourselves, but seriously, it's like, how did, <laughs> how did, how did we get here? Um, and one thing I just wanted to also quickly ask you that came to mind was, you know, I talk about anticipatory grief with some guests on this podcast. I've had an episode about it. Do you feel like you went through some of that? Like I know at a, at a young age, maybe you were, but didn't obviously kind of maybe know what anticipatory grief was at the time. Do you feel like that was prevalent for you or maybe your mom, I'm sure to an extent, and even, even not knowing, you know, what, the, the fact that he would die eventually, but just the, the grieving of, um, you know, anticipatory grief of like, he's not the same. He might never be the same like that kind of a thing. Do, does that bring true for you? Yeah. I, you know, my, my mom didn't necessarily share, you know, any, you know, percentage of, you know, survival or anything like that. You know, I think she just wanted my brother and I to spend as much time with him as we could. Um, and so she, you know, she may have known, you know, early on in terms of, you know, where we're kind of expecting thing, you know, he might pass. Um, but we just knew ultimately he was struggling and, you know, and just suffering so much. Um, it was almost kind of graceful, you know, the day he passed, because obviously it was so saddening that specific February 11th day. Um, but we knew he was free from pain and that was just so reassuring for us because we saw him in the state. For so long um and you know we just knew he couldn't communicate how much he was hurting and that's that's what really was so difficult um so we, it was really kind of a relief for us as a family you know just to have him free of pain yeah. um but you know in that from that point forward you know he was always going to be ingrained and in, in our lives and you know i'm so grateful for the nine years that 
he had on, you know, my life and that impact. So it's something I'll, I'll never, ever forget. Yeah. I just want to mention too, I'm so glad you brought up relief because that is not something I think is talked about enough or acknowledged, or it's very hard for people to say that out loud. Like I feel relief that my loved one has died. That that's a brutal thing to say out loud because it's, it's, it sounds, it sounds really icky, right? Like that is, that doesn't sound good, but I feel like it's, and I'm sure you would agree with me. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it, it's not that we're happy they're dead. It's not like we're happy they're gone or anything, but it's like, just as they would probably want for us. We don't want our loved ones to suffer. We don't want them. It's like in dogs too, and cats. And, you know, I feel like it's like the same thing. It goes with like any living being. I think most of us, right? Don't want to see or witness suffering, especially those that in, in those that we love. And unfortunately, it takes dying sometimes to free them or to, to free us from, from that. And I can't, again, I, I keep saying I can't imagine, but I cannot imagine being in your dad's position and, and being in that state of suffering and not being able to then communicate it. But then you as his family kind of know, I mean, I you can't think of anything much worse <laughs> truly. So, um, but anyway, I just want to thank you though, for, for bringing that up because that is, um, like I said, a tough thing to verbalize. It's a tough thing to even admit to ourselves, like in our own brain. <laughs> um, but it is something that I think a lot of us feel a lot of us are right in feeling and I know it feels slimy but um it is a reality of of loss and and it does um and again I like to say like I don't think our loved ones would want us you know like you know seeing them in that state of course but then also kind of suffering along with them in a very different way um but especially with something prolonged like that, it's, you know, yeah, there, there is a sense of relief that comes with, I, I would all just say here too, in case I haven't said this yet on this podcast, like I, I felt the same way with mm -hmm. both of my parents because they were, and it was also just, you know, painful, not seeing them in their normal state suffering or not. It's just, you know, and it, it's, there's kind of this sense of like, how long can this go on for? This cannot go on forever. Like this is, it's just too painful. So um, anyway, long-winded way to say thank you for saying that because I don't think that's been acknowledged enough here, certainly on this podcast. So um, I think that's a, that's a great point and um, a very normal and very natural thing to feel as well. Um, so would love to hear from you. Um, and you've kind of talked a little bit about some of this, but what are maybe like two or three overall pieces of guidance or tips that you would give fellow grievers who are going through some sort of, maybe it's anticipatory grief or are experiencing a recent loss uh, or even not recent, it could be years removed, <laughs> right? Um, but who are just struggling and really just need somewhere to start right now. Yeah, I think two two kind of biggest facets in my own life kind of come to mind, and I hope it it helps you know anyone listening here. Um, the first one is really, you know, really taking things slow, as slow as you need. You know, it things can definitely feel rushed, especially with how overwhelming some of our you know day to day lives can be. Um, and I think it's it's so important just to literally take it one day at a time. Um, it's you know, it's really just trying to figure out how can I, you know, conquer this day, um, just being, you know, grateful for being here each and every day. And just how can I really just handle everything I got going on right now? Um, I think it's so important because, you know, it really kind of clears our mind to just focus on this time we got now um, versus just stressing, you know, over what might be happening in the next couple of days, week, month, you know, year, whatnot. So, um, I think that's so important just to kind of slow things down as you need. And if you feel like you're in a groove, you know, keep it going, keep it rolling, but, um, you know, never being afraid to kind of just slow things down, take time for yourself and really just kind of focus on self-care and what makes you happy and, um, and gives you kind of that sense of, uh, relief and just relaxation and comfort, um, and just kind of balancing everything there. So, um, that's one of the biggest, you know, things that I think, I think is super helpful. Another is, 
um, you know, which can be tough due to, you know, levels of comfort and vulnerability. But I think it is so important to find support around you. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, family. It's maybe a really good friend. It's maybe even not, you know, someone you don't know very well. It could be a, you know, a counselor, a psychologist or someone, but just someone you can really express, you know, your feelings, your thoughts, and just kind of get it out. Because I feel if you internalize everything too much, um, it can be detrimental because you just start kind of overthinking things and um, it really kind of, you know, can dictate your mood and really affect, you know, what your thinking process is for, for all aspects of your life. So even if it's just one person um, to really just kind of connect with and, um, you know, bounce ideas and, you know, emotions off of, I think it's so important. So, um, you know, just having a support group and hopefully, you know, that becomes bigger and bigger. So you just have a, an army behind you just getting through this life together. Um, but I think just starting with at least one person is is extremely beneficial. Yeah. Beautiful advice. Yes. And I also want to mention too, you, you just touched on this, but you know, having of course your friends and family and things around you and people who, who maybe can get it because they, they are perhaps they're connected to the loss in some way or they're, they're connected to the person. If it's a, if it's a death, um, you know, they're connected in that some way that can be very helpful, but it is almost more, almost beneficial. I think in some ways to talk to a third party, especially if you're feeling like, you know, yeah, maybe people around you are experiencing the loss too. But again, because we know grief shows up in all kinds of different ways, or you might have your own thoughts and feelings or whatever about it. Um, or, you know, you had your special connection, let's say with the loved one who died. Um, it can be very helpful to get just like a third party who maybe doesn't have quite the, the emotional stake in it, I guess, um, that some people around you do. I, I definitely, I went to therapy a little bit after my dad died because I was then finally able to grieve my mom because my dad went kind of his health started declining pretty soon after my mom's did. So I didn't really feel like I could grieve her. And then, um, and then I went through a breakup and, you know, so just all the things kind of coming down at once. And I had very supportive people around me, but I was alone a lot. A lot of them could not, you know, a lot of people sometimes listeners here, you know, there's maybe somebody that can't be there with you 24 seven. I see this all the time on Instagram. I don't know if you do, but I, there's just a lot of people that are very alone out there. And that is one of the most detrimental things, I think, in some ways that can happen to a lot of us, or we actually push people away and we make ourselves more alone <laughs> than we maybe should be. Um, hi, guilty of that. Um, then we should be uh, as we're going through something like this. And loneliness can lead to depression. It can lead to a lot of things. So again, just cautionary tale for anybody listening. Um, just again, I know we're hammering home the, the support and the support groups and everything today, but there's a reason for that. So whether it's a community on Instagram or, you know, whatever it is, just finding like-minded people, um, who can speak grief in a similar way that you do. I think, and that's, what's so beautiful. I think about this grief community, especially on Instagram, but just in, you know, in the coaches and stuff in general, we all might be experiencing loss, like overarching umbrella, if you will, but each of us, you know, approach it differently. Some of us have, might have a little more humor or like dark humor in it, which I kind of do sometimes. <laughs> um, and some of us might be a little more serious about it or a little more, you know, there's just maybe more depth there. I don't know how to, how to describe it, but, um, you know, finding the person that, you know, you resonate with, I think is, is really important too. And through communities like yours, you can do that. And that enables people to, to kind of fi find your tribe, if you will. I know that that saying is kind of used a lot in this, um, in this space, but it really is so important. Um, as again, especially if you can't have people around you 24 seven, like, you know, you're so lucky in that you had your mom and your brother. And I know, but there are some people I know, and I was kind of one of them for a little bit who was living alone, didn't have anybody. So just to acknowledge kind of everyone here today, um, you know, again, whether you have people around you or not, it can still feel lonely, even in a room full of people. So um, it's one of the most difficult parts about grief for sure, I think. So that being said, just to wrap this up, I love to kind of end with this question. I feel like you've pretty much touched on this and you've, you kind of answered this already, but I'm going to ask you anyway, what does finding gains from your losses mean to you? 
Yeah, you know, just to kind of summarize, you know, our our conversation over uh, you know this short period of time, I, you know, it's really just reflecting and figuring out how to persevere through you know any adversity, how significant that adversity is. Um, you know, it's really just continuing to find courage, hope, and just making the best out of your life. You know, I think it's just so so special. You know, what we all have today, regardless of what we're going through, um, it's just you know it's such a it's so great, you know, such a grateful kind of um, understanding, you know, that we get to spend time with, you know, other humans and kind of do things we love and kind of go through this life. And, you know, if we're impacted by loss, any, any which way, um, you know, there are going to be those ebbs and flows from, you know, just dealing with internal, you know, thoughts, feelings, you know, mood, things like that. But, um, you know, there's also a lot of good that can come out of this life as well. So um, I think just really just using your experiences, your past experiences, ingraining that as it, it, it is a part of you and not forgetting about it, but using that to kind of continuing to add on your strength and what's going to push you forward. I think that's, that's really the gains that, um, you know, I look for in my loss. So, yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's, it's adding value to your life. And I know that sounds kind of strange. And if anybody here listening is like, very early on in the loss right now. I always say we're just planting seeds here. So if anything we've talked about today feels a little far away or far-fetched, or you're like, these two don't know what they're talking about. They're, they're far too happy for me. Um, fair, <laughs> right. But it's always, this is, you know, the kind of the mindset shifts that we just want to embrace and just know that they're out there. And I never want to impose, like, if we can do it, you can do it on people. <laughs> Cause I kind of hate that, but it, there's some truth to it. And, and it, like you said, it does take courage. It does take hope. It takes, it takes a lot of things. Um, but I love the advice of the day at a time that you mentioned. And I always say it's all about baby steps. Um, it can feel impossible just to like, want to take our dog out, you know, for a walk on any given day or go get the mail or feed ourselves or anything. Um, and so I think just having expectations of what we can take on or what we can do. And I know how difficult this is for anybody who maybe has, has children, right? Like your mom did, you still have to work. You, you have a million different things going on, but, um, you know, coming back to the present, I think you, you've alluded to just like being kind of very present, not trying to worry too much about like the future or getting too caught up in the past. And that's tough for people because I think, we do tend to get sometimes caught up in the past, maybe because we want to remember our loved one. And so I think there's just a little of a distinction of like remembering our loved one fondly and, and reminiscing without getting stuck back there, you know, and, and we all easily could, and it happens to all of us. And so, like you said, it, it ebbs and flows. So we might have not only just really good and bad days, but good and bad moments within one day. So it's, you know, grief is a process for, for a reason, but, um, I think the advice that you gave is, is perfect. It's just not putting pressure on ourselves and, um, just giving ourselves permission to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Just believe that it's there. Just believe that the tunnel is there somewhere, even if you can't see the light quite yet <laughs> and just making our, our loved ones proud and, um, you know, we, we have such a short, short time here. And I think if anybody has seen loss of any kind, you know, that we know that better than anybody. So, um, we can sit there and, and kind of wallow and let it get the best of us, or we can create something beautiful with it, which you have certainly done. So I am just so grateful to have had this conversation today. So like we mentioned, um, all of your links will be, uh, in the show notes and everything, but I know we connected on Instagram. So just really quickly, if you want to just say like your Instagram handle or any place where people can, um, get in touch with you today, if they wanted to, where can they find you? Sure. Yeah. The, uh, social media handles, this is why life, um, the website is, this is why dot life. So hopefully kind of keeps things simple there, but yeah. thank you for everything, Tara. This was such an incredible conversation and thank you for truly all the work that you're doing and, you know, this community and providing the resources that you've been doing, um, especially through your, you know, incredibly difficult losses too. There's, you know, you know, there's no, you know, really comparing and losses is really just, we all have our experiences and, and what can we make from that? And you're doing such a unbelievable job with that so far. And I can't wait to, you know, be an ally in the space with you for, uh, for the foreseeable future. 
Yes. I love it. Me too. I know. And that's, again, such a perfect way to end. It's such a perfect point. We all have, we, you and I, we have very different losses, very different experiences in life, but look how we've kind of moved forward and have a very similar outlook on life and, and mindset from it. You know what I mean? It can happen. It's it's possible. So <laughs> we'll I'll end on on that hopefully positive note for people. Um, but thank you as well for for just everything you're doing. The voice that you're allowing people and empowering people to have could not be more important. I love to see more of that in this community. Um, so yeah, I, I love it. Feeling very, very uplifted and inspired right now. So hopefully everyone is too after this episode. And I just appreciate your your vulnerability and sharing your story too. So much, much thanks to you. Of course. Thanks so much, Tara. Thank you. I am sending you a huge thank you for tuning into today's episode, my friend. I'm so grateful you're here and for the steps that you're taking to heal your heart, open your mind, fulfill your soul, to learn, grow, and evolve, and move through this crazy thing called life in big, beautiful, impactful ways. Visit lossesbecomegains.com for my blog and for more coping tools. Explore my Grief Becomes Gains online course if you need some extra grief support and coaching. And be sure you're following along on Instagram and Facebook at Losses Become Gains Podcast. I love seeing new faces, meeting new people, hearing your story, and supporting you however I can. And remember to always keep asking yourself, how will I turn my losses into gains today? I'll catch you in the next episode.